networking is something that we are all told we have to do, but no one will actually tell you how. And especially if you are more introverted in your nature, just being told to go and network is about as useful as a chocolate violin. So hopefully some of these tips will actually give you some practical help. Now, one of the first things that most people are gonna expect me to talk about is social media, so we'll get it done and out of the way. Don't discount social media. I think a lot of us can worry about appearing cringy. I know that some people will look at my YouTube channel even and kind of go, oh, bit cringe, and that was the thing that stopped me for years, despite having the people that actually know me and love me and all of these things saying, I think you'd really enjoy this. I think you'd be good at it. You should go and try it. Worrying about what other people thought of me literally stopped me from making a channel for about two or three years, which now, in hindsight, is such a shame. So just do it. Just get going and let them be negative in their own little corner. Social media can be a godsend if you are more introverted because you can connect with people in a slightly more controlled way. You can rewrite a message a thousand times. Instagram is my favourite social media on which to talk about my work. Obviously, I talk about it on YouTube, but to actually show day to day what gigs I'm doing, where I am, all this kind of stuff, I like Instagram just because it's the one that seems the most intuitive to me. But a lot of people do use Facebook and LinkedIn as well. Like I say, Instagram's just my favorite. Make sure that you're keeping your social media up to date though, because if somebody is given your name, chances are they will Google you. Now, I don't have a website. It's something that I'm thinking about putting together, but I don't have one yet. So therefore, I wanna make sure that my Instagram page and my YouTube channel are showing exactly who I am, what I'm about, because it's just where people are gonna go to look for information on you. So make sure it's up to date and make sure it's clear. One thing I would definitely recommend doing is having a work social media. Keep it separate from your personal one. For me, it just makes all the difference in the world because then when people search for me online, they can find exactly what they're looking for, not the fact that I took my very needy, can you see her? There's the snoot, golden retriever out for a walk. Although, I mean, that is relevant, I suppose. Make sure that you're building relationships first. Don't go straight in with, here's my CV. Ask them a bit about themselves, chat, have a few conversations before you approach them with any kind of request for work. Obviously, this can look a little bit different depending on the circumstance, but if you are sat next to somebody in an orchestra, you get chatting and they mention that maybe they fix for a few things or something like that, don't immediately go, oh, can I send you my CV? Because that can just come across a little bit, a little bit keen, to be perfectly honest. So chat to them, build a bit of rapport, and then maybe after the gig, you can send them a message via social media and say, would it be all right if I send you a CV? They are much, much more likely to take that positively. Also, this kind of goes without saying, but make sure that the relationship you're trying to build is a realistic one. For example, don't just message the leader of the LSO asking about extra work. They're probably gonna ignore your email unless they are very, very kind and very, very polite. Do your research into who actually books the players, number one, and what the process is for that orchestra. Every orchestra, in my experience, does it slightly differently. Some only book extra players through auditions, some are happy to do it from CV or recommendation, some will ask that you go and play to the principal. It's all slightly different. So make sure that you're doing your research and you're emailing the right person who actually will be able to help you. This can be a little bit tricky sometimes, but try and treat networking like you're making friendships. Don't go in there with an agenda. People don't like it. You know, when somebody comes up to you and you know that they either wanna say something to you or they want something from you, it immediately kind of puts a bit of a guard up. So be nice, be approachable, be kind. You never know where opportunities might come from in the future. So it is very, very handy to have some friendly faces in your corner. And don't just focus on the big names. Don't just focus on the people that look like they're getting all the work or that are really, really good players or seem really, really popular. Chances are the person who's a little bit quieter, 
who maybe is just kind of getting on with their business is actually the person who will be able to give you some opportunities in the future. So don't be snobby, don't put your focus just on the obvious people. You never know who is going to end up being an orchestral manager. So be nice to everyone and I mean everyone because you will reap the rewards later in your career. It's also just nice to be a nice person and reputation in this industry is absolutely everything. Make sure you don't end up spamming people. Ah! A reminder email every six months or so with an updated CV to a fixer that you really really want to work with is great, that's fine because also it shows them that you're working, you're adding things to your CV and all of this which is great. But don't send them weekly messages, don't call them unless it's been agreed that you can because it can just seem quite invasive and to be honest a little bit annoying. And we've all heard those stories of the person that emailed an MD every single day for like months and then eventually they caved and gave them some work and if you want to go down that route, fine. But it wouldn't work for me <laughs> and it wouldn't work on me either. I do get messages from people asking for advice which is lovely and I have had people that mm, it's a little bit, you know, too much and it just kind of puts you off working with them because you're like, well if they're like this over messenger, what are they going to be like in person? Are they going to be good for the group to have in their midst? Are they going to work well with people? So yeah, just be wary of that one. Also, make sure that you're not sending copy and paste emails. Orchestral fixers, orchestral managers, they get a lot of emails with people with their CVs and all these kinds of things and if your email isn't obviously tailored to them, they're unlikely to read it. Make sure you use their name, make sure you reference relevant things about the ensemble that you're looking to work with. If it looks like you've copied and pasted something, chances are it's not going to get you very far. Always buy the tea <laughs> was one of the best bits of advice I've ever been given because it leads on to so many things. Also by tea I just mean general beverages. When you're in an orchestral rehearsal and it gets to the break, offer to buy your desk partner a coffee, a tea, whatever. If you go out after the gig then offer to buy them a drink. It goes such a long way and it is the best opener to a proper conversation you'll ever get. Most musicians live off coffee anyway, so it can be a really really nice thing and everyone loves to be bought a drink. I know this is easier said than done, but don't put too much stress on it. It's easy to come across more needy if you're really really worried, so just be you. Life is way too short to try and put on a front and ultimately people are going to find out what you're like anyway. So just be you and also don't stress over something too much if you feel like you've done something embarrassing. Chances are it wasn't as bad as you think and other people very rarely remember our embarrassing moments as much as we do. So just don't stress, move on and maybe learn from the experience. This last point is actually one of the most important to me and it's to not get caught up in gossip. You never know who's listening slash who you're talking to and who they might know and it's just not a good look in general. A friend of mine once got a little bit caught up in the chat and actually started kind of bad mouthing this lady who was in the orchestra and it turned out that he was speaking to her husband. <laughs> So you just don't know and it's just, like I say, it's not a good look. It doesn't come off well on you to badmouth other people, particularly when it comes to their playing. If you are asked honestly in a private conversation, then give your opinion fine. But don't get caught up in a big group of go like gossip, don't say mean things because then the person that you're saying it to will start going, is this how they talk about everybody behind their back? And again, it's really not a good look. So yeah, don't get caught up in gossip. Don't get caught up in the negativity. It never ends well. So in conclusion, listen more than you talk. Keep it real. Don't say you've done things that you haven't. The music industry is, is too small and they, uh, they will find out. And just be nice. I would say about 70% of this job is just being nice and being friendly, being kind, being reliable. Obviously you have to play your instrument, but it's going to be presumed that everybody in that room can play their instrument to a high level. So 
don't try and put yourself above everybody else and try and push people down. Just be nice, buy some teas and coffees, have a chat and you'll do just fine. If you're looking for a little bit more advice on what to do in an orchestral rehearsal setting, then watch this video here and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.